So far in this Wii series of mine, we've had a look at an epic space opera and a sci-fi anthology series. Now let's get a little bit weird, but no less awesome. Farscape was a science fiction show which aired from 1999 to 2003, where it was cancelled and then eventually concluded in a miniseries. It occupies a curious place in the realm of science fiction, some familiar concepts, but a show quite unlike any other when it comes to execution. Join myself and a living ship of escaped prisoners in examining all the reasons why Farscape is awesome. A truly alien feel. A word to describe the tone of Farscape is bizarre. Seeing as we're following John Crichton, an astronaut who gets lost in an alien region of space, it makes sense to make this region truly feel as alien as it would appear to our protagonist. Everything in the show is engineered to not be familiar. For a start, the living ship of Moya is quite the change from the exploration vessels, space stations and battleships of other sci-fi universes. The biological aspect of its design results in an ambient sound design which resembles a pulse, the interiors look like arteries or veins, and the camera work inside the ship is always swaying and floating. And that's just the main setting. Add to this all the various aliens and planets with equally out there designs and we understand immediately how Crichton must be feeling. Cap it all off with a truly unique psychedelic dance beat throat singing orchestral theme song and the tone of the show is complete. Jim Henson's work. Part of what adds to the alien feel is the incredible work by Jim Henson's team in bringing the various creatures to life. By the time we got to Voyager and Star Trek, so many aliens were just normal humans with forehead appliances. But with Farscape, these aliens are spectacular in their design, construction and operation. The work that went into the creation and operation of the puppets and animatronics is a feat which would make Del Toro jealous. Even when the creature designs are actors into prosthetics, the designs are always interesting and beautifully captured on film. Compelling characters. But all the cool concepts and special effects in the world isn't worth much if the story doesn't have great characters. Just ask Andromeda. But luckily Farscape has great characters to spare. What becomes immediately apparent after just the pilot episode is the incredible chemistry between the main cast. Ben Browder's John Crichton is like a half-drunk Indiana Jones but as an astronaut rather than an archaeologist. Claudia Black as Erin Sun is a badass to end all badasses. Virginia Hay as Zan is a more spiritual character that actually does useful things. Deanna. Anthony Simcoe's Dargo is pretty much Wharf 2.0, and Jonathan Hardy's Rigel is a comic relief in the best way possible. And that's just the cast of episode 1. More and more interesting characters come and go as the show progresses. Most of the fun comes from watching these big personalities, each with their own moral code, clash with one another. It's a group of characters who all want different things for different reasons, and just happen to end up on the same ship. Being so well defined, it's as if the scenes write themselves. And while this is often played for laughs, it also lends the character interactions to hugely poignant moments and sometimes shocking betrayals. It's a crew that ends up feeling like a family. They have their spats and they fall out, but when it comes down to it, they stick together through thick and thin. The villains. An old saying goes, a story is only as good as its villain. If that's true, then Farscape is one hell of a story thanks to some amazing villains. At first, there's Crace, a ruthless military captain on the edge of moral bankruptcy. Then there's Marilyn Manson's wet dream Scorpius, the seductive but heartless Grazer, and all the monstrous Scarens. Much like our main cast, these villains had their own well-defined personalities and each brought something new to the table. Crace's emotional trauma made him unpredictably dangerous, Scorpius seemed to have no moral code to speak of and would devise new and horrific ways to torture our characters. Grazer was a mistress of manipulation only out to amass power for herself, and the Scarens are big scary monsters which will terrify kids the world over. But Farscape's true genius is how it contorts story reasons to actually force our heroes and villains to work together. Almost entire seasons will be dedicated to establishing them as a threat, only for a climactic two-parter to come along and have us kind of rooting for them. But those are only the physical obstacles. Let's look at Trip Out Crazy. This is also part of that bizarreness aspect of the show, but the mental state of our characters becomes a huge plot point in the show sometimes. This is mainly due to Crichton being the only human in light years trying to fend off the most evil people in the galaxy and trying to contend with the people on his own ship as well as timey-wimey dimension hopping hallucinations and well it all gets a bit too much for him sometimes. This often leads to the Crichton freakout, which is kind of like the Nicolas Cage freakout, but rather than getting worked up about something, it's more as if Crichton has just given up caring. Nowhere is this more apparent than with his interactions with Harvey, a version of Scorpius which exists only in Crichton's mind. 
These scenes are amazing and offer some truly creative visual ideas, character exploration, plot exposition, and a dash of comedy as well. By the late seasons, it becomes a staple of the show to have these mental acrobatics almost play out as bottle episodes. But rather than the bottle being a ship, it's Crichton's own mind. The true pinnacle of this idea is an episode which features Looney Tunes-style cartoon segments with a cameo from... But of course, Crichton's mind is also the subject of... epic storylines. Much like Babylon 5, Farscape was way ahead of its time in creating vast, overarching plots rather than simple, episodic stories. But while other shows deal with the rise and fall of empires, Farscape takes the cosmic ramifications of its plot and places them on the personal choices of our main characters. Traditional sci-fi staples like space battles and ray gun fights take a backseat to psychological horror and temporal and spatial one-upsmanship. This allows everything to tie together smoothly. The changing dynamics between the characters are placed in such a way that they affect the galaxy itself. The eventual love story between Crichton and Eren is already good enough, but when the fate of the galaxy itself depends upon it, each time it's jeopardized, the plot and character drama jumps a few miles up in scale. It keeps the epicness without ever losing focus on the characters. Conclusion in the end, Farscape plunges the audience right into our main character's head, sometimes literally. We encounter bizarre and outlandish people, places, and scenarios. We feel caught up in a wild alien universe, yet a sincere emotional core is never sacrificed in doing so. And that is why Farscape is awesome. <laughs>